If only they knew the hub for young business minds. Welcome back to another episode of the If Only They Knew podcast. Today is another big one as we're joined by the Apprentice 2019 candidate and the 21-year-old entrepreneur, Dean Ahmed. Dean, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on. Good, good. Thanks for having me. How are you uh, keeping busy during these crazy times? Yeah, mate, just, just smashing these podcasts out as much as I can. I, I've got a backlog now like, of a couple of months, so <laughs> yeah, it's all nice. good, mate. Good. It's productive. Good to hear. Yeah, how about you? What are you doing? Yeah, look, just trying to use this time to sort of keep busy, reflect, mm. plot a few things, um, and just trying to, yeah, get in the zone. I think, you know, we can always get quite caught up in the moment of, you know, how busy we are and stuff in, in you know, especially when this all stuff wasn't going on. Uh, so I think it's pretty helpful in that point of view. But obviously, yeah, look, it's, been, it's getting to a pretty long period now. So, you know, let's see how it all unfolds. Yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. But I just saw the news. I think they're extending the lockdown until like May, June. So God, God knows how long it'll take. I know, I know. And it, it, what's going to be interesting, even from a business perspective, is when this all does blow over, how the market's going to react, what you know, consumer trends are going to be like and all that sort of thing. But, you know, mm. I think we're all in the same boat. And so, you know, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that later. I think it's a big point, like how life for us personally and life for us in the business world will change after. But we'll definitely get into that later on. But first, if you don't mind, let's start with understanding a bit more about who Dean is. So if you don't mind telling us what like life was like growing up for you, was it, was it tough or was life quite fair on you? Yeah, look, um, so immigrant parents, my, both my parents are Pakistani. Um, I've got, I was the youngest of three children, so I've got two sisters as well um, who were older and, you know, they probably claim I'm the sport one and bits and bobs, but <laughs> life for them probably was a lot tougher and, and, you know, it would be interesting. But for me, you know, yeah, it's, it's a weird one, right? I've incredibly in the last, you know, I'd say two, three years become a lot more self-aware and, you know, I look back at, you know, period, obviously, you know, up to date where the majority of our lives now have probably been in school and stuff like that. And it's interesting to look at that sort of stuff because I always sort of struggled in school for different aspects. You know, I was okay academically. Um, I was probably in the middle end, but, you know, for me, finding out who I was and all the different hurdles I went to and I went through so many, but, you know, looking back on it all, I think it's all built me and I wouldn't change anything. Um, mm. So yeah, look, growing up, obviously, you know, uh, it was an interesting period for me for sure. Yeah, but it's built who I am. Yeah. How, like you mentioned school there. How was you in school? You said you were sort of in the middle. Like what was your grades like? Were, was you sort of um, smacking out a few or was it a bit? Uh, I mean, look, for me, I always remember having problems at school in terms of like me messing around and, you know, different things. And I remember, for example, you know, a big thing for me and it probably was being a bit, you know, I don't know whether it was, you know, as an ego thing as we all have at that age. But, you know, for example, I used to see, you know, athletes, you know, mates who were playing for first, uh, you know, you know, whether it be Arsenal or Ipswich, I had mates playing for, et cetera, who, you know, school promoted and was so proud of. Mm. For me, what I did in my business, and I was like, that's great, but I just wanted some sort of self-acknowledgement. And as a young kid, I sort of needed that sort of arm around the shoulder, a bit of, um, you know, almost like a bit of mentorship. And at school, you know, I was always the one who, you know, people sort of thought, oh, yeah, you know, he's going to fail. From like a teacher perspective as well, you know, he's not going to they'd be destined for success and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And so that sort of put me in a, a box, I think. Um, so, yeah, look, it was, it was an interesting one in terms of my grades and stuff. I was pretty medium. Um, I got, what did I get GCC? Like two A stars, five A's, uh, three, four B's. Yeah, like normal. Um, whereas obviously my sisters were, you know, the other end of that getting, you know, full of A stars and stuff like that. That was my expectation. And it's interesting. I'm sure we'll go into this. Even from a family perspective, my, my parents only realised very late how you know they they thought you know my two sisters very academic went on to do great things at uni and you know they respect you know their dentists work in the city etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah and they thought i was going to always follow that spectrum but for me you know i think they slowly got to a point where especially in the last two years they realized that you know every kid is different right? and everyone's got a different path mm. yeah it's, it's definitely hard to stand out when you think how many people are in a normal school like there are that those few that stand out and it's most of the ones that either are smashing out the grades or the yeah. ones that are doing the sport. So, yeah, it's, it, it can be quite tough for kids. Like, we're pretty much the same age. I'm 22. You're, you're 21, right? So we sort of, yeah. we're growing up at the, at the same sort of time. So, yeah, definitely a weird period at school. But you mentioned also about, like, your parents sort of having the expectations. Was that, like, more of a 
cultural thing because I know like typically with white English parents like my parents they sort of didn't really care that much about school you know like there wasn't really that no of course what I will say is that I'm so grateful I had two parents who who were very very different so my dad's a doctor very academic orientated always the one you know I remember trying to take me to tuition and you know very very academic minded I I can remember so many incidents where we're sort of arguing he said no you're going to shut your business while this all goes on and your academics and unless your academics you know get up to get up to the mark and my mum who's almost like a not very well educated but a massive purebred entrepreneur Uh, she's got like a business completely nothing to do with anything that is like a um, fashion age or bride and wear sort of thing and she's just raw purebred entrepreneur i'd say so it's interesting having both them parents very different i think was actually a blessing in disguise um and yeah look as i said you know they wanted me to go to uni tried that all that sort of thing but then they got to a point where they realized who i was and look, everyone's got a different path and you know as long as that, that person is happy and content and you're making the best decisions then you know so be it uh, quite a big point off of that, um, but we won't get into it too much because it's a bit deep. But you mentioned there being on your own path. Um, I like to ask my guests: Do you think like your path are sort of almost predetermined, like you're almost destined for certain things, or are you not a believer in that? Yeah. It, it's an interesting one. I was thinking last night actually about just randomly. I don't know why it popped into my head, but I was thinking: Are leaders born or made? Are entrepreneurs born or made? And I don't know. Look, but my gut feeling would be it's all about your environment and how you were brought up so typically i think for example if you look at the most a lot of successful and look of course there are always going to be outliers for any trends but you know i think and there's an overwhelming majority you know cases which basically show people who have stumbling blocks or you know testing times when they're young in whatever way that you know it doesn't matter financially or you know where you are in the world it just depends case by case but typically the more um tests you basically and stumbling blocks you come through as a young age the the be- not better person but you know you learn resilience i think put it that way and yeah. so for example you know I, I watch a lot of gay v and he talks about the immigrant mentality and stuff and you know for example i just think because immigrants have gone through so much then naturally they know what zero tastes like whereas you know we're, all of us are probably you know being born in this country don't have that level of you know understanding what zero tastes like and naturally you know our, our reflective traits and personalities are always sort of um, off the back of that and affected by that. But I don't know, it's an interesting one. Yeah, it's, it's a bit too deep to get into like, on a Friday afternoon, but it's, it's quite deep, yeah. Um, what, what is it you wanted to be when you was younger? Because obviously you started your business quite young, we'll get into that later on, but a little bit younger than that, what, what did you want to be? Um, so I realised very young, um, and it changed throughout, but I realised very young that, well no let me reframe that actually it's interesting so I realized you know maybe about four or five years ago I started putting two and two together so I remember being you know maybe 13 and I was selling I went down in the market bought you know at the time um it was snapbacks then hats you you know used to put back and forth so it's stupid but they're obviously an in-trend for those you know kids our age at the time bought them for 10 quid sell them to all my mates 20 quid then I used to sell you know, loads of different things. I tried to do loads of different things. Um, made a bit of money, like for a little kid. And I, you know, I realised that that was what I wanted to do. And what was interesting was, whereas all my money, my mates all around me were thinking, "Oh yeah, I want when I'm older." And look, to 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 an extent, we all do. You know, different in different ways. But all my mates were saying, "Oh look, I want to get the big cars and the big houses and all these different things." And yes, that's great. But I thought. The best way of me doing that is finding something I actually enjoy and like. And then, you know, I back myself and trust myself enough to, to then get to that point. Um, but it was very important for me to, to love what I do sort of thing. And, and now I'm so passionate. Like I could talk about that for like hours and hours. So <laughs> yeah. um, I think I realized basically to answer your question that I loved being a business person, loving the transactions, the adrenaline, the, the heat, the stress. And, you know, yeah, that, that sort of... Um, that sort of vibe i guess you love being busy as well that's probably a big trait of it right yeah i've literally and look as i said i'm 21 we all go through different you know successes low points troughs and i've realized especially you know coming back off the show how much i love that being busy even if i for example then and i always give this expression when i'm trying to get a bit of advice from someone or a mentor i say you know, I think some people are completely different and everyone can choose what they want to do. But for me, and it sounds stupid when I say it to my fifth family or sisters, but they literally say, I literally say, 
if I get home at 10 p.m. and then I've got or 2 a.m. and then I've got to wake up at 7 a.m. or whatever it is, I love that stress. And, I, and yeah, in the short term, I'll be like, and it sounds so cliche. In the short term, I'll be like, oh, I'm so tired. I wish I could just get more sleep. But macro, I love that. I love that feeling. I love the stress because it's all just part of a journey. And, you know, I love that adrenaline rush. Yeah, I think I live too much of a sheltered life. Like I go to bed at like nine or ten in the in the afternoon and wake up quite early. But I feel like I need to just sort of get past that thing because I'm always thinking, oh, I need to look after my body. But I think yeah. I think I just need to risk it and be be more like you, Dean. Be more busy. Uh, I don't know, mate. Like it, it's different. Obviously, we have to sleep. Like different yeah. people are, are like different ways, right? So yeah. to, uh, if I've gone like two nights in a row with little sleep I you know I'm just so unproductive and forgetting even that just socially I can't speak to anyone I'm tired I'm just like very short um tempered and irritate, irritable so like, everyone's different but yeah I just think as long as you've been busy and being productive which you know I struggle at points everyone struggle at points then you know that's the way forward yeah I've been trying to say like whenever I talk to people online I always say like like we mentioned with the lockdown now like now obviously if you're well you're healthy like god willing now's the best time to sort of if you want to do it, be really productive and think of different innovative ways of not necessarily making money, but just making something productive, you know? Exactly. And I always think at our age, you know, we don't even, have, we're so lucky. And obviously, yeah, of course there are outliers, but for the most part, we don't have massive bills to pay or families and all this sort of stuff to look after. And so this is the age, as you said, to be able to then just come up with ideas, just try it, taste, taste, taste. Um, and just, just like get experience. Like I remember loads of different examples and you know, I'm sure we'll go into them, but me just, you know, wanting to meet cool people, people who are a lot more, you know, experienced than me or people who are successful in their respective roles and just trying to like get a bit of mentorship or work with them and just learn, learn, learn as much as we can. Because then, you know, in 20 years or 10 years or three years, however long it is when, you know, we do have families or whatever, then, you know, you just don't have as much time for those opportunities. Yeah, it seems like such a long way though, all that family stuff. I don't even want to think about it just yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but talking of being a young age, obviously you started your, pretty much started your business at 15, 16, was it? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And I'd say obviously at the start, it was very much like a hobby. And then, you know, as I always say, in the last two, three years, I'd say it's become obviously a lot more serious and established in the industry. Um, basically, I... As I said, I always loved sport, always loved business. And so I thought it was the obvious path for me to go down. I was always a very people-orientated person. Um, so I literally, I remember very clearly, I messaged someone on LinkedIn. It was two coaches at the time, Ian Pont and Julian Fountain. Obviously, coaches aren't in that, in sort of, uh, so it was, it, obviously, it was cricket I was talking about. Um, and coaches aren't massively, like, uh, sought after. Obviously, players, you know, you wouldn't be able to message a random person via messaging a player and they get a response. But yeah. I messaged the coach. And sort of just said that as a very naive 15 year old, a very cheeky, naive, silly message saying, oh, look, this is my name. This is what I want to do for you. Can I get your number? I'm sure we can get us some opportunities and have a good chat. You know, very, very naively. Um, I got their number and then one thing led to another. I entered them into this uh, tournament in Dubai. Luckily, they got literally probably through luck. I don't think I had anything to do, it, to do with it, but, you know, God works in weird ways and wonderful ways. And literally... They got a deal there, flew out in my half term, networked for the one or two weeks I was there for, and, you know, just sort of stayed consistent with it. And, yeah, very unprofessional and naive at that age. And then, obviously, now I've been in it. It's weird because, you know, in my industry, agents, I'm an agent. They're very much, you know, over 40, 50, ex-players, lawyers, etc. And so even now, although I'm very young, I've, you know, been doing it for four, five, six years now. So it's an, it's an interesting one. Mm. Well, on that, would you say age is a, can be a barrier in business? For sure. So this has like always been massive to me in terms of the topic because so if you take my industry, for example, and make it a more obvious thing. So let's say it take football. If, if it came out in the papers tomorrow, Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi is represented by a 20 year old, 21 year old or an 18 year old. No matter how good that young lad is or young um, girl, young girl, boy, it doesn't matter because they're always going to be some level of subconscious bias and you can already imagine I can imagine on Twitter all these people saying 18 year old not he's silly what's he doing like but it doesn't matter how old you are it matters about how good you are and yeah maybe the majority of times when an 18 19 year old sets something up they, they might not be on as, as good but everyone's different everyone starts a different path and it's all a learning curve do you know what I mean so mm. is age a barrier I think so unfortunately um and it's like a lot of things but my perspective is is that 
I'm not just going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, I can't, can't do this because of my age. My perspective is actually, it's going to be there. It's going to exist. And so why not then rather just combat it with, you know, just getting on with it and then, you know, let your results speak for yourselves. Yeah. Well, you could be part of like almost a generation of trailblazers, perhaps, because it, it does seem in some aspects of business, there's like almost a paradigm shift. Like, I don't know if you follow boxing, but there's a promoter mm-hmm. called Eddie Hearn and he's, he's old. I think he's like 40, 50, but in terms of, in comparison to the other promoters, he's relatively young. And I think people mm-hmm. sort of, the younger audience sort of relate to him. So hopefully there is a bit of a paradigm shift happening and the younger people will sort of be just more respected in general. But again, that's another story, but we, we can only pray. Um, but getting back to your, but getting back to your story, if you don't mind, um, you said you sort of went to Dubai, was it in your half term? Yeah. Yeah. What, like, how did that affect your sort of school life and just your mentality in general? Because I know if I was sort of involved in business from that age, I sort of think, oh, I don't really need school anymore. And I sort of par it off almost. Yeah, and I always didn't like school, didn't get on with teachers. Just from, I wanted some sort of, um, and look, as I said, it was probably, if I'm being brutally honest, as a 15, 16 year old, I don't think it's a bad thing, it's pretty natural. It probably was an ego thing. I wanted these teachers mm. to say, to look and say, you know, instead of saying I'm or, or suggest I'm going to go into nothing and I'm a failure and just doubting me and all that sort of things, and being so negative, I wanted some sort of level of appreciation. And I gave the example earlier, I don't think I finished it with that, you know, fine, they're all these footballers, amazing, incredibly talented lads. But then in my business, I was actually representing these guys in their, you know, people in their first teams. And, you know, no one really cared, no one really got it. When what I needed was a mentor or someone just to put, their arm around the shoulder. They didn't have to know anything about a business or sport just to, you know, almost just guide me on the right path. And that's why, you know, I got a call randomly from, you know, a message on Instagram from this random guy, 16, 17 year old entrepreneur. And I'm so sort of in the know that what I didn't have at that age, I'm so keen on passing, even though, look, I'm there when we're all in our different paths, but it's more just like for someone then, whoever, as a 16, 17 year old to be able to just speak to someone, I didn't have that. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm massive into that sort of stuff. But yeah, I mean, school, it was an interesting one. I, I think it was, it was never for me. And as I said, it's all about being self-aware. So I realised um, what was on my earlier that I wanted to go into business and, you know, and I always have disagreements. Can you, you know, you do a business degree or whatever, you get a business A level. Does that co- correspond to the business world? My personal humble opinion, I don't think it does. You know, you could do a master's in business, but I think by the time you finish that, I'd rather have those amount of years actually learning, growing in a business, learning from people and making mistakes and then uh, becoming a better entrepreneur and businessman from, from them. You sort of did touch upon it quite a bit there, but if you could wrap up like one bit of advice for those 16 year olds, 17 year olds looking to start their own business or get involved in the business world, could you sort of encapsulate that in, in like a couple of sentences maybe? Yeah. So, so like, I would say it's all about becoming self-aware, number one. I think mass, and again, Matt Gary Vee talks about it all the time, yeah. where entrepreneurialism is put on such a pedestal. And so everyone wants to, like, even when I speak to my mates, everyone wants to be, you know, a big entrepreneur and make money and all this sort of stuff. But actually, you've got to realise, are you, you've got to be self-aware. And that's not, that path is not meant for everyone. And, you know, as uh, Gary Vee, I, I quote him so much, but he literally always says, you know, uh, for example, my sister, she works in the city, went to uni and that is her path. She enjoys it. If you put her in a business environment, she wouldn't enjoy it probably and she wouldn't do it as well. Mm. So everyone, firstly, I'd say, make sure you're not just doing it for the sake of the, you know, the clout in inverted commas. Yeah. Like, you've got to actually be doing it. And then two, in terms of starting a business, if that is your path, then I'd say, um, literally, don't chase. When you start a business and everyone does this, don't think, right, where can I make money? What's there to be made money on? What you've actually got to do, scrap all the money thing. And I know it sounds cliche, but find something you actually are passionate about. Find something you actually like and then go from there. Because you're so much more likely to work those 15, 16 hour days when it gets to that point, if you like something. But if you are going into something just for the sake of money or something like that, it's just not sustainable to get that to that top 1% what people claim to, to want. You're sort of uh, almost the complete opposite. I had Joe, Joseph Valente on last week and he was saying, like, just follow the money, even if you're not passionate really? about a certain topic. Yeah, like, just make, make yourself passionate about it, basically, and chase the money. Um, so, yeah, two polar opposites there. I don't know which one I'll, I'll side with. Um, but talking about passion, you obviously have a, a passion for cricket. Um, yeah. And 
but yeah. yeah but again more than just that i guess perhaps is it like the people skills as well like and getting involved with just yeah people? so I, I would, yeah of course i like cricket i like football I like sport but my passion i would say more than anything is the process of growing something and the transactions so for example in my business obviously i look after athletes and like in america nfl is a big one where they have big draft days yeah where you know you have a thousand players x amount of teams and then they'll all go through it'll be on tv and the team will pick this player for this price etc etc so the best the, the best way i can describe it is that adrenaline, the adrenaline feeling of seeing my player on tv who i've sort of potentially you know took from here no one in the world knowing him and then on sky sports he's getting picked for 100k or 200 whatever it is that adrenaline feeling and again it's not money but it's the adrenaline feeling of just something happened i can't explain it on a draft day i'm just like so jittery and like uh I've just got natural, like it feels like I'm on a hundred coffees. Like it's crazy. Yeah. That that is what I love, basically. Yeah. So that I guess that's you just sort of yeah again just following your passion, doing what you love, and you know, making the most. Consistent, as I said, I did it for two three years, and you know pretty much got nowhere. Almost like I look back right now, embarrassing that like, as any sixteen year old in that position would have been. Uh, but you know now I think if I started now, I would have been exactly like that because but because I've got I started so young. And I've done the hustle. I've tried it all. I've learned. I've made so many mistakes. I've learned from them, and that then has made me a better entrepreneur. Uh, and hopefully, you know, what I like to think is being a, being a market leader in my industry. Definitely, man. It sounds good. But talking, we have to sort of talk about. It. I know. I don't know whether you like talking about it or not. Um, I know a lot of people sort of don't. Um, but if you don't mind, let's let's go on to the apprentice very quickly. Yeah. Um, how how did that come about? Like, how did you actually see the application process, and then what made you want to apply? So, always been a fan of the show. Um, always loved it. Always watched it. Mm. And obviously, my business was at a point where you know I wanted to take it to the next level. And with my business, obviously, it's a lot about you know, for example, you know, I wanted to go get a profile and obviously get the investment and that sort of stuff. So, not many people know this, but I actually applied the year before, so season fourteen. Mm. Got through all the interviews, got offered it, and at the time, I was. Uh, on like a gap year uh, doing my business but then retaking some of my A-levels again because of my parents um, so I got the offer mass and then the, the plan was always to just get the offer then sit on it and then tell him oh can I defer it I tried to do that it didn't work and they said look you might have got to take it or you know if you want to apply next you can but there's my guarantee so you know I was sort of pushed towards that and I had to take that decision where I had to just give it up and obviously that was a big thing for me and you know even I remember when the season 14 came out I literally could, I couldn't even watch it. I literally, I just felt so weird. I saw it on Twitter one day and I thought, mate, what have I done? Like, I've just given that opportunity. It just made me feel very uncomfortable. So that whole six month then period after that, whatever it was, I then was in a position where mentally I'm thinking, fine, I'm still going on the show. I'm going to apply again. But obviously I never knew if there was going to be that opportunity to actually, you know, come. I didn't think I'd, you know, I wasn't sure if I'd actually get it. So, you know, luckily I went through all that again, um, got offered it and, you know, I was very, very humbled by that. And, you know, it was a great experience and, a crazy experience like so intense and no one will ever be able to understand it unless you actually go through it but yeah i really, really enjoyed it that's so risky though like try, deferring it and then put, having to sort of put it back and <laughs> forget I, that I remember, I remember writing an email saying look can i defer it this is my situation i've got an exam blah 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 the producer called me he was saying oh what dates your exams they're going to try and see if we can do both it didn't work out and he said look you can always apply next year, but there's no guarantee. It depends on the set of people. Mm. And obviously when I went back, they did, you know, a few people at different stages recognised me and stuff. But even when I got that call, when he either tells you, you know, you're getting on it or you're reserve, I just didn't think I was going to get it. I thought it'd be a reserve and, you know, it'd almost be karma for turning it down. But, you know, as I said, I, I think, you know, everything in life happens for, everything in life happens for a reason. And, um, you know, I don't regret anything. It was really good. No, definitely. I, just a quick thing, and this is a bit uh, selfish of me, but uh, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've applied twice. Um, yeah. I applied last year and a year before. Uh, last year, no, the year before, obviously it was your year when you was auditioning. I was sat next to Ryan, Mark, and Karina, and like in no. my head, like you, you know, when you sort of know, like these two are definitely getting on. And I really, was, yeah, like I was so nervous, but I was full of confidence at the same time. So I was like, oh my god, maybe like this is the group that's getting on. Um, but obviously, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't happen. But do you think I should apply for the third time? Or no, do you for sure. I'd say, people ask me, I'd say, look, you don't necessarily need, need to be an introvert or an extrovert. What you do need to be able to do to go on that show, you need to be able to stick up yourself in the boardroom mm. and you know, be opinionated and be confident as much as you can. Mm. Um, and if that's for you, and if you're going on it for the right reasons, which obviously I'm, I know you are, given you've run all these different things and podcasts and stuff, 
then you know why not? And uh, you, know, you can always give me a call if you need any advice or whatever. I'm sure the others would say that as well. Um, yeah. But you know, then there are some people who don't go in it for the right reasons, which you know is another whole topical topic to discuss. But you know, so be it. Uh, well, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what was your reasoning? Because I know a lot of people, like I heard Camilla uh, Ainsworth recently, I think she was on 2018. She said she went on just for the platform and the exposure, which isn't a bad thing. But what, what was your sort of mindset? No, it, it would be a similar thing. Now, when I say platform, for example, with me, now I've got a platform. It's, you know, England cricketers or whoever it is, they now, you know, my access to them is now a lot more direct, as it was already, but... You know, it's just open doors. More people know me. And even, for example, if I think from a social point of view in terms of the people now around me, the friends and the business contacts I've now got because of that, you know, are so valuable and I'm so grateful for them. Um, you know, it was 100% worth it. So I think it depends. But yeah, for me, it, it was great. And I went on there to get exposure, obviously get the investment of one, but also to a platform for me and a business profile to then make more contacts and, you know, get that extra step towards my end goal. Mm. How, how tough was the actual process itself? Obviously, it seems very tough. You're not allowed to talk, apparently, when you're in the house. Oh, itself, yeah. like, there's no rest that in that. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to something Lewis and Camilla did, actually, just on the way here. I texted Lewis just now saying it was really good. The he, Mike um, podcast, was it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And he um, was just saying, and I remember this, like, Lewis, someone, they used to sleep outside of our rooms. Um, they used to, you know, do crazy things. I always used to... Lewis, as he said in that thing, he was pretty like a rebellious as well. But I always used to then just get a bit of a hump and, you know, I didn't like being treated like a, a baby, mm. uh, which I know, you know, I was always respectful and stuff. But then, you know, even little things like, you know, you couldn't eat at certain points and there was like food sitting in front of me. Yeah. I'd have the other team eating and I was just like sitting there, like obviously in such an intense environment, loads of different things. Like it's crazy. You can't go to the toilet without asking someone like crazy. But look, we, we sort of knew that we're going in. And as I said, I've got no regrets and, it was very, very intense. And, you know, I really liked what Camilla said as well and her views on it in that it just makes, I think, everyone a lot more resilient. Whether you win it, whether you go in the first week, I think it's such a good learning curve. For me, in my opinion, at least, where you learn... I don't, personally, I don't think you learn a lot business-wise at all. I don't think it really. But I think you learn a lot of important stuff, socially, resilience, uh, and bits and bobs like that. So, you know, it was really good. Well, well, that was going to be one of my questions. You sort of answered it there. Like, I was going to say, how, how much does it allow you to apply your business skills? But I guess, like you mentioned, it's probably just good for you at, at such a young age just to be tested like, to the highest level, really. Yeah, if I'm being perfectly honest, I, you know, I thought going on there, you know, you set business tasks and all this sort of stuff, of course, it's going to be about you know, your business acumen and stuff like that. I don't really, I'm sure that most of the others would say this, I don't really think it tests your business acumen. Mm. It says how you can deal with people, other bits and bobs. But, you know, the fact, for example, like, look, you know, in reality, we had to create a nice lolly. And, you know, it was so funny to watch that bag. Absolute disaster, nightmare. We look like absolute idiots, rightfully so, whatever. But my point is, I just feel like in the real world, for example, we would have had a, picked a nice lolly and, you know, we could have picked any flavour we wanted, done some market research, whatever. But we were given whatever, like four or five ingredients. Um, and you're sort of like in that process, directed towards failure and stuff which again I've got no regrets for it was a TV show loved every minute of it I'm not, I'm not that person to hold back and say oh this and that I loved it but in terms of business credibility and, all, and does it translate into that show are you tested not really um, but yeah, yeah you, we could tell at some points you were very tested like your facial expressions probably some uh, of the yeah. best I've ever seen <laughs> like the way you were screwing uh, Lottie quite a bit um, and a few yeah. other people, like, honestly, <laughs> honestly, it made me laugh a lot. But how much was you close to sort of saying, this ain't for me? Because you made it to, was it week 10? 10, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, Just you ever, yeah. Did, did you ever think you could, you'd give up? Yeah, look, if I'm being honest, I, I, having spoken to a lot of people in, in our um, batch of candidates, I think we all went through bits where we were like, you know, one-off bits or whatever, where we all thought, you know, F it, this is too much. We all went through that. Like, I think if anyone says they didn't, they're probably lying because it is so hard and so intense and, you know, nearly two months, it's crazy. Um, but I just thought, you know, you had to, I had to stay in there, I had to keep going and, you know, I just kept trusting the process as much as I sort of, again, didn't necessarily agree with it in terms of, you know, business acumen and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it is what it is and, you know, I stuck in there and, and, you know, it was a great experience. 
but I guess so many people in a nine to five will, be, will can sort of relate to that stress because they're being told what to do. Uh, like obviously not to a, an extreme level, but they are sort of being controlled in that sense. They can't do much. Um, so uh, you sort of touched on it uh, earlier, but do you do you think the nine to five is for everyone? And do you do you understand like the idea of the rat race? And do you realise how many people sort of want to get out of it? And would you advise sort of trying to get out of it, forcing your way out of it, if that makes sense? Um, yeah, look, do I think the nine to five is for everyone? No. Do I think it for some people? Yes. Um, and I just think, and a lot, I think about all my mates and all this stuff, I just hear it all the time. Everyone, and it sounds cliche, but everyone wants to be the top. Everyone says, oh, I want to work really hard. I'm going to earn millions. But it just comes down to the actual execution. And look, I'll be the first to put my hand up. Like, we all find it hard to do. We all, it is difficult to execute for everyone. You know, I find it difficult, and especially how to get started and that sort of stuff. But the whole you know, point I'd say is natural selection takes its place in that if you are good enough, you will get there. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter if you're poor, it doesn't matter if you're rich, it doesn't matter what colour you are, whatever. I just think you will get there. So if you don't, you just create excuses, all that sort of stuff, you'll always be that sort of type of person. Um, yes, it's hard, but I just think if you've got it in you, you will get there. Um, and yeah, I just think you've just got to stay consistent. You've got to always uh, have the effort in there, the right intentions. And, you know, people then always, another thing is they just give up too easily. You know, if I gave up after two, three, four years because I was not getting really any results, it was like a hobby, very unprofessional, then I wouldn't have been where I am now. And obviously, hopefully, you know, where I want to get to. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Everyone's in a different boat. But I'd say it just comes down to that whole thing about talk is very easy, but execution is, is a completely different ball game. Yeah, that's a good point. I think get out there try it you'll find your feet somehow like if you're hungry enough you'll find your feet um but let's talk about what you're up to now then obviously you've got fine edge cricket what what how's that going and what what sort of does that entail for you on a daily basis um i run an international sports management agency we represent international cricketers coaches etc so we've got you know some really exciting players on our books england players guys playing south africa guys world cup etc what we do is manage their careers so everything from the 360 service. So whether that means contract negotiations, PR, uh, getting them the right deals uh, in cricket, a lot of the stuff in the T20 leagues and making sure they get the right opportunities, establishing a global footprint, sponsorships, you know, the whole 360 service. So we basically are their agent slash their management. So it's going good. Um, we've got some exciting talent. We've got a young 22-year-old uh, who's about to play for England, loads of hype around him in the media and sort of stuff. So it's really exciting. Um, and another thing what I'm working on, which is, all to be revealed pretty soon is a completely new business, it's completely different, unrelated to sports management. Um, I won't give too much away, but it's basically in the events um, brunch category. A few people might have an indication what that is, but um, that's hopefully, you know, post, fingers crossed, corona, when that all blows over, um, that'll be launching. And again, that's a, it's exciting for me because, you know, one, I want to keep busy as we, as we spoke about before, and two, it's something very different, and you know, it's going to be challenging. Um, but you know, I, I think you just got to back yourself, sort of thing. Yeah, that sounds good. So, how how much have you missed out on? Because what you're saying there it sounds like all I'm hearing is busy, busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly. So there's been a period. Like, oh, again, I think everyone always says that, you know they love to paint a good picture, but it's not like that. You know, I've had points, especially in the last, and I've been away and stuff for work, but maybe the last, you know three, four months where, you know, I've had a couple of weeks here and there where I'm just finding it difficult to be busy. I'm sitting around and it's hard. It's not good, but it just happens to people. But you just got to then try as hard as you can to get out of that. And thankfully in the last, you know, however long, I've sort of gotten out of that, built a bit of a, you know, you know, little things like, for example, I don't know if you can see it in the back of my walls. I've got like these um, new, uh, like just wallpaper things, really little things. And I'm just putting things on paper plans what, what so literally in front of me i've got personal aims for the year and then over here i've got like different things about how i'm actually going to get um how i'm actually going to go about them because before everything was in my mind and you can only get so far if that's if that's the case so i've learned now especially the sort of person i am naturally as humans we, we're lazy with this with that so i've put things on paper so every morning i look at it I'm like okay yeah i've got to do this and that um so yeah look I, i'm now i'm getting busy especially the last couple of weeks enjoying it i love hustle yes it's hard because of coronavirus you know some people aren't at work and this sort of stuff so it's hard to access some people but and obviously the sport stuff there's no sport going on so 
a lot of the cricketers are just, you know, sitting around almost chilling, which is good for them, time with family. But for me, you know, there's no business activity going on. So, yeah, look, it's interesting. I think we're all in the same boat, but it's just about sort of using this time as best as you can. Um, as I said earlier, plotting, reflecting and getting ready for, for new opportunities when, when the time's right. Mm. Uh, again, even then, you, you tried to argue with me when I said you're busy, busy, busy. It sounds like you're still busy, busy, busy. But um, what what have you sacrificed? Because I know when I was 21, obviously, it was just a few months ago. And even like the past couple of years, I've, I feel like I've sort of missed out on a lot of what my friends are doing um, in terms yeah. of going out, partying. Like, do you yeah. miss out on that much or is it yeah. something you're not too worried about? Or do you still do you still find time to do that? Um. Yeah, look, I've gone through different troughs of it, right? And it's really interesting where, you know, I've grown up and, and you know, all my mates, my direct uh, of my mates always go out and stuff like that, which is great. It's important to have a balance. And then sometimes, you know, I want to be around people who, you know, I'm a big believer in the quote where it says, uh, you know, your biggest, five of, your biggest five friends are a reflection of who you are. So it's important to be around hustlers, I think. Or maybe not hustlers, I'm not talking about necessarily... This is a really controversial thing where I don't think you need to be around people who want to be rich or want to be successful, but just good people who want to do good things in life, good morals. And naturally, I think as a person in every single level, you just sort of elevate naturally from being around people. Because, you know, I, I can definitely relate to instances where I'm not around the right people all the time. And look, it's hard to drop certain people and stuff. It's not like that, but it's all about time management and you know, being around better people in every way. And then I just think naturally life takes its toll and, and the results happen. Mm. Talking about being around better people, good people, you obviously perhaps made good friends with Lord Sugar. Um, is that right? Do, do you still talk to him now? Does he contact you at um, all? Yeah, I, mean, I won't say too much, but um, obviously, look, he said stay in touch. When the time's right, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, ignite that relationship hopefully in one way. But, you know, I've got so many opportunities. I'm busy. I'm hustling. And look, Lord Sugar, what he's done in business is is pretty, pretty crazy and, and monumental. And so he said stay in touch. When the time's right and when I feel like, I, you know, I've got a good enough substance behind me and you know something's sort of exciting is, is sort of coming then you know I'm going to reach out to him but so far I'll, I'll be the first to admit it's been pretty limited but you know who knows what will happen <laughs> well hope, hopefully he'll be in touch and you know um, you seem to be sort of at a young age you seem to be on the right track definitely so hopefully you'll have that good good following with you you'll keep growing you'll keep evolving uh, you mentioned sort of briefly what your what your plans are with the businesses but what sort of What's on your mind in terms of what you want to do in the future besides from business? Or is it all just business? Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs get caught up in business, business, business. No, look, with me, I, if I then, as I said earlier, if I'm stressed working all the time, I enjoy that. But at the same time, look, a big thing for me, I've, I've, to be honest, I only started thinking about in the last, you know, it's sort of literally a week and two weeks, as, ever since someone contacted me. I always found it hard, I said it before, as a youngster, that there was no one out there a bit older than me or even you know, way older than me to just be able to speak to about my ideas and my entrepreneurial drive. And I was so, such a confused child. Um, so if I can then one day, when I get to a point where you know, I'm a bit successful, whatever, then just to give back in that, whether I organize a foundation or charity, I'd love to do that where I get a few business people from different um, arenas and industries and you know young people with cool ideas and want to do good things can just reach out as a platform because I never had that and I always think like that was a big big thing you know I tried to reach out to people and people just didn't really care yeah. um, but you know that's life I guess so yeah. <laughs> well I have, to, I have to thank you as well like just very quickly because uh, you was one of the first people I reached out to on Instagram I don't know if you'll remember this but if you go through our DMs uh, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, I, I messaged you for an article, not expecting you to reply. And he was like, hey, mate, love the page. Yeah, sounds great. Saw your post. I, literally, I was thinking about this this morning as well, being completely honest, and I'll never lie to him in the face. Yeah. When I saw your content, obviously visually, one, it was very yeah. appealing. I remember you saying, I read, I think I was listening to someone's interview. You did like a marketing or some branding. You had some sort of editorial experience, am I right? Yeah, yeah, in, in marketing, yeah, definitely. There we go. Sorry, that's perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just like, again, a similar thing what I'm talking about. A platform for young people which again I don't really think there's much out there but people try and do it and stuff like that but for me from what I saw and that's why I connected with it straight away is that you know it looked very good and obviously the content was there which appealed to me that's why I followed the page and it was really really interesting and I think there was a, a clear gap in the market and I liked it so oh, thanks mate. To you, mate no no keep us with it, like we all are yeah thank you I, I'm, I'm still young you know just like you are uh, <laughs> but the couple last last questions if you don't mind this one's a bit of a hard-hitting one 
All right. What do you want your legacy to be? I know, like, I think about this. I don't know the answer. So I don't know whether you do, but what do you want your legacy to be? So no, it's an interesting one. I've never really thought about that. I've never thought that far ahead. Legacy. Yeah. Um, look, I'd like to be known as someone then who changed, first of all, my industry changed norms. Um, like, in a specific example, like agents, for example, are very old school. I want to be able to change that break barriers in my industry and want to revolutionize the industry in five, 10 years time when, uh, when it comes to that. And then, you know, as a person legacy, someone who then, you know, hustled and actually made things happen. And then, you know, one day, as I said earlier, give back uh, and help young entrepreneurs actually make things happen. Not just a bit of advice here and there, but actually give them the skills, helping them towards getting them skills uh, and making a difference. But you know, that's so far away. Things for us, who knows? Uh, and I'm sure we're all on different paths and, um, you know, just keep hustling and, and see see what happens. Mm. For all those young people listening, then um, my page is normally about sixteen to mid twenties. Obviously, the same as us. Any last words for those guys? No, I'd say look, the world we as humans underestimate how much how accessible people are. Um, you know, use your platforms out there, whether it be Instagram, LinkedIn, or whatever it is. Message people you want to you know speak to, want to get in touch with. Tell them what you're doing. Keep hustling. You know, get experience. Try to taste as many different things. Do different things, and just learn, learn, learn. At this age, that's the biggest advantage we have is our age. Uh, and then, obviously, look naturally. I think life works in wonderful ways where opportunities just open, doors open, and you know, if you're consistent and you don't give up after one day, two days, five days, whatever it is, you know, you'll get somewhere. I truly believe that. Definitely. And we mentioned it earlier, you've got the world at your fingertips pretty much. Like you said, you can message your favorite star, your favorite celebrity. They're all at the, at the end of the phone. So just whip out that phone, send them a DM. Who knows what happens? You know, I had some say the other day, for example, they wanted to, they liked watches. And I told them, look, if you want to work in watches one day, or even if you're passionate about it, you can literally go on LinkedIn. Forget the, the elite brands like the Rolex and the Amigas and stuff, but there are hundreds and hundreds of independent watch brands in the UK. Message every single one on LinkedIn. You might message a thousand or five hundred a day. Out of five hundred, people are going to respond and take those phone calls, go for coffees with these people, and doors just open. I don't think it's that hard in that instance. So people just think, oh, they can't be asked to do the work. They see the short term, oh, people aren't going to respond. I don't want to do the short term hassle, and then they give up. But that's the difference, I think, between winners and losers. Definitely. Well, thank you for coming on. You've been very helpful. Um, obviously, now's the opportunity. I know a lot of my followers will already follow you, know who you are, etc. But if there's anywhere you want them to go, anything you want them to do in terms of plugs, social media platforms, please. No, let no, no, just keep following me on my on my Instagram, my Twitter. I'd say it's at Dean Ahmed A H M A D underscore on both. Hit the DMs. I'm always accessible. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, let me know and. Uh, to you I'd say good luck keep going with it mate it looks unbelievable so I know I always listen to your podcast and stuff like that so keep smashing it mate thank you mate I honestly really do appreciate it like I said you've been a big support ever since last year so thank you so much I look forward to seeing your journey and like I said you're younger than me it feels weird normally I'm speaking to older people so <laughs> yeah just keep smashing it mate you already smashed it already so thank you mate. thanks a lot man cheers mate thank you if only they knew the hub for young business minds.